Okay, so hear me out. I bought a 3D printer for some hobby projects, and it just sort of spiraled out of control from there. Now I'm building an ionic wind thruster from scratch. What even is an ionic wind thruster? Well, Jay from the Plasma Channel has a great series going into detail on this. His work is inspiring, and I recommend watching it if you haven't already. The general idea is to expose two electrodes to a high voltage source. This causes what's known as corona discharge on the anode. The air in the region around the electrode surface ionizes and experiences Lorentz force in the direction of the electric field. I worked with something a little like this many years ago as a research lab assistant in college, so I felt inspired to revisit the idea. My original vision was to encapsulate the electrodes in a ducted system and introduce compressor and turbine to amplify the effect. I did a lot of work designing and printing turbo machine parts before I realized I overlooked a critical aspect of any successful jet engine. Nothing kills the performance of an engine like a gas leak. I don't mean the blow up your house kind. I mean the high pressure sneaking around in between things kind. This is the kind of leak that saps the power from your engine. It turns out seals matter. Without a healthy seal, your beautiful thermodynamic process loses all its joy. So I abandoned the idea of turbo machinery to focus on the underlying science. But maybe this isn't even about thermodynamics at all. We're explicitly removing the fuel burner heat source from a traditional engine and replacing it with some weird Franken-taser thing. There's no easy equation we can use to predict how the flow will react when exposed to corona discharge. I needed some way to study these effects in isolation. Okay, mistakes were made. So I applied some concepts from my aerospace engineering background and hoped for something interesting, or at least to learn something new. This is Little Sparky Mark I. It's my humble introduction to building things that don't work at all like they were designed. I assume it will be the first of many? Most of the other YouTubers have run these things in open air. I decided to introduce a tube to encapsulate the whole mess and constrain the flow. Like Jay from the Plasma Channel, I also paid entirely too much for an acrylic tube. Other than that, all the other parts are 3D printed, except the electrodes. The components I bought from Amazon for high voltage are linked in the description. If you decide to buy some for yourself, please remember they're dangerous. They can generate 30,000 volts from just a small lithium battery. Seriously, don't touch. <laughs> and definitely don't hold the anode in a pair of pliers, trying to see the corona discharge in the dark in the bathroom. Uh, unless you worship the magic smoke? If so, this is a good way to meet your deity. So, what's different about Little Sparky? For one, I spent far too many hours filing sharp points on hundreds of cut wire segments and hammering them into place. Shout out to Send Cut Send for the beautiful laser cut stainless steel electrodes they sent me for this project. My hypothesis was simple the effectiveness of the ionization and resulting force would be improved with a stronger electric field. Some wise adventurers use razor blades, as they have very fine sharp points, which concentrate the electric field at the edge. However, this results in the electric field being distributed along the edge, rather than consolidated around a, a small point in space. It seems like we would get more concentration around a sharp point like a needle, Using this geometry, I designed a pair of ring electrodes with holes at regular intervals. Cut wire segments were inserted into these holes. The entire electrode is energized to high voltage and filaments form between the tips of the wires and the cathode ring. Early photos show the effect of not sharpening the wire, leaving the raw results from angle cutters. We still see filaments form, but they manifest as a strange truss structure, presumably because of the flat faces on the wire. Now, I could talk for an hour about all the things I learned along the way of building this thing, but I want to share some of the visualization results. That's right, I'm talking dry ice and dance party. 
and lasers for science. The lasers are for science. The lasers are for science. Okay, they're for fun too. In my last video, I showed the construction of this laser imaging system. I designed it specifically to visualize flow for this and other projects. It helps us understand how the flow behaves by highlighting only a 2D plane and observing particles moving along in this plane over time. The effect can be quite beautiful and even mesmerizing, especially with dry ice. Unfortunately, all the footage for the Mark I was so washed out by all the white plastic, I wasn't able to see anything meaningful. What you're seeing now was recorded using Little Sparky Mark II, which is considerably bigger than its older brother. There is still a lot of ambient light from the white center core, but I was really excited to be able to capture the effect in 4K slow motion. And I got a lot of mediocre footage. Here's some of the good stuff. Here you can see the flow jump upwards and toward the center when the electrodes are activated. The behavior I found most surprising was the dramatic inward flux of the downstream flow, commonly called downwash. Momentum theory suggests the area should contract as the column of air accelerates. In this footage, the flow is accelerating upward, resulting in a tiny force pushing downward. It almost looks like it contracts radially inward as much as it accelerates axially between the electrodes. Recording this footage was extremely difficult. It took all day and two kilograms of dry ice to get even what you see here. Most of it was blurry or focused at the wrong depth. I tried to use this lantern glass to constrain the fog, and some of that footage is super cool in slow-mo. Uh, this is just the beginning of what is possible with this visualization technique. There will be plenty more time for science later, but that's enough science for today. I want to close with something fun. And since it's nearly Halloween, I also took some time to visualize some spooky effects. I hope you enjoy them. And remember, when mistakes are welcome, growth is guaranteed. <laughs>